All right, Ben Manning, today is Tuesday. It is uh, January 3rd. Welcome to the Dog Walk presented by Barstool Sports. It's myself and Chief. Chief, uh, Happy New Year. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be back. I, I feel like I had one of those moments over the break where it was like, I have no idea what time it is. I have no idea what day it is. Like, having time off is great. I eventually get to a place where I get a little stir crazy because I feel like I have nothing like orienting myself. You're just lost. Just yeah. floating. You're so just lost, it's good yeah. to be back in this chair. It is good to be back. Um, is it safe to assume that your holiday break was uh, filled with a nice, great tasting, less filling Miller Lite? Buddy, let me tell you. We had, I, I ordered it, MillerLite.com backslash dog walk. Redline. Redline, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, is it, we don't have one for dog walk? Just Redline, okay. we just do one. Well, I made a mistake on that. But I did order it through, I can't remember what the promo code was, but I ordered it, put it on my back deck, mm-hmm. and I, have, I got a 12 pack, and I think there's eight left in that case. So I just like casually, Having one with dinner, having one putting a movie on, just relaxing with Miller Lite. That's the way you do the holidays and having it out back and, and like so cold. That perfect temperature cold beer was beautiful. Very nice. So, yeah, holiday gatherings, office parties, fireside conversations, football Sundays. Uh, winter means more moments with the coolest people in your life. Make these moments even better with Miller Lite, the great tasting. Light beer for people who love beer. A new year is a perfect time for friends, family, and great tasting light beer. It's Miller time. And uh, you guys already know that Miller Lite is brewed for taste. It hits different than other light beers. It's uh, it's it's more than – it's not just like that watery stuff, you know. It's not it's just real that beer. water stuff. It's real, it's beer. real beer. It's a real light beer. Mm-hmm. So Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. Go to MillerLite.com slash Redline to find the delivery options near you. Or you could pick up some Miller Lite pretty much anywhere that they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. All right, Chief. So today's topic. Um, very heavy. We've covered mm-hmm. it before in one of the pick sixes. Um, actually, the first pick six we ever did, to be honest with you. Yep. Um, we are going to be doing a full-length episode on the Moscow murders. Um, this happened in Moscow, Idaho, uh, the University of Idaho killings. Um, obviously, a very sad and uh, tragic tale that kind of is taking over all over the place. Where are you in regards to how much you followed this and how much you know about it? Uh, I, I did a little research getting caught up so we, I could talk about this. Uh, for this show, but between the two of us, you're the murder guy. You're the you're like the guy who researches all of it. You've had a fascination about it. We talked about the California killer uh, before. Like it's just something that even if we weren't doing this show, you're reading. And where I'm like, I don't like scary stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. try to I try to avoid it. And uh, but I feel like I I was aware of obviously the story, and I was also aware of like the controversy of this all the internet sleuths on tiktok and instagram trying to solve it so which is always like a weird thing to me yeah where like there's this rush to figure it out it'd be like you're you know kind of amateur investigator where it's like you know there are professionals for this it's strange and and that's that's not something that we're going to try to do here Mm -mm. and um it's more or less like what we always try to do is we want to give you guys an episode where you're more well versed and you kind of know what's going on if you haven't followed it okay Mm -hmm. um i i feel like i'm able to talk about this i've been reading about this like Pretty much nightly, man. It's one of those things that like sucked me in. Yeah. Um, well, why don't you give like a quick synopsis of the scene in in general? Yeah. So, so the University of Idaho is is in Moscow, Idaho. It's spelled Moscow, but mm-hmm. it's it's pronounced Moscow. Um, so it's in Moscow, Idaho, and it shares the border right there with Washington. Yeah. Um, it is eight miles away from Washington State University, so right there with Pullman. Mm-hmm. Um, so essentially, um, what happened? We'll, we'll kind of go from from the beginning here. On the night of November twelfth, um, eleven twenty two King Road, uh, it's a six bedroom house, and the house was three stories. Um, essentially, how the house works: there's a first floor, there's two bedrooms, second floor, two bedrooms with the kitchen, mm-hmm. and then uh, a living room area, and then the third floor there was uh, two more bedrooms, a bathroom, and then like a little deck area. Uh, the house is pitched, so it's kind of on a hill. Mm-hmm. So the front door, you're on like a regular level, but then the back door, if you're coming from the back, it's on a hill. There's a back sliding uh, yeah. kind of door, like yeah. sliding window kind of type door. So it's a little odd in that aspect where if you're coming from the back, you would think it's the first floor, 
But if you're coming from the front, like you're really at the first floor. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it does. And like it, it's pitched up. Yes. Yeah. So if you come in, you can go down. You're coming through the back. You're going down steps to get to the first floor. Correct. Yeah. It's almost like a basement, but it's not a basement. The sliding glass door thing. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a feature I will never have in my house. Because mm -hmm. if watching that, um, the California killer, uh, the night stalker, that that was he was targeting houses was that, that had that sliding mm -hmm. glass door. And then now this is just like, you know, a nice feature that you uh, I'll just never have because mm -hmm. it seems like that is uh, oftentimes a point of entry for for cr for, for criminals. Yeah. So on the night of uh, November 12th, um, the, the, there were there were there's six people who are in mm -hmm. the house. Um, there's there's two roommates who, who arrived home at 1 a.m. Then there's a couple who. Went out, they went to the Sigma Chi house. They got back around 145. Their names were Zanna Kernodal and Ethan Shapin. And then um, there was a, another group of girls, um, Maddie um, Mogan and Kaylee Gunkalvis, Gun excuse me. Gunkalvis. Gunkalvis. And uh, she, um, the, the, both of them went to a bar in town and uh, they had a food truck and they went home around 156. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the house had six occupants that night of. November 12th, leading into November 13th, Sunday. Um, and so they went home that, you know, that, and, and the next day around noon, 1158 and 911 call went out and one of the roommates, um, there was a, it wasn't a roommate, but it was from a roommate's phone from inside the residence were saying there's an unconscious person and there were friends there at the time. And they're like, Hey, you know, you got to come and you know, see what's going yeah. on. Uh, the police come right away, obviously. And I believe, you know, there were four of them, which were the the, the two who lived upstairs, Maddie mm -hmm. and Kaylee, and then the couple, uh, Ethan and Zaina, who were on the middle floor, and they were pronounced dead like very, very yeah. quickly. Um, it was a brutal murder. It was a it was a stabbing. Yeah. Um, and uh, li like I said too, I, I know we covered a lot of this stuff on the pick six, but we're but just kind of rehashing yeah. it, kind of put it for under for everything for people who don't know everything. And uh, there were two roommates who were on the first floor that were unharmed. Okay, so that's that's kind of yeah. where we're at right now. Um, and you know, not a not a not a crazy big university, and it, it kind of just rocks this campus. And, you know, is, yeah, I think it's racked the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it has. It, it absolutely has. Because um, how how you just kind of think, like, how could this happen to four people like in the middle of the night? You know, kinda, like it just it's just weird. It's a strange, super strange to the like you would think that there would be screaming. You know, everybody has a cell phone like you. Yeah. I remember hearing about this case in the 60s where this guy, he killed eight nurses. And, uh, like, they were all roommates. He killed them all. And then, like, one of them hid underneath the bed. And that, to me, was like, well, like, you know, they're, they can't – no one can hear them. There's no way to call. But, like, this – it is strange that he was able to do this to four people and get away – yeah. And it was like, oh, well, the, police, the the 911 call was an unconscious person. Like, no, it's yeah. a brutal murder. So it, that part always was like, wait, wait, what? And mind you, this is a, a very, it was a party house. It was mm -hmm. in the middle of a lot of apartments where a lot of people throw parties. Yeah, like typical was, college. Yeah, typical yeah. college town. It was right by the Greek Row, obviously, where they had a lot of parties. And, um, you know, so it was people, and, and you know, if they were home at... 145 they were the last ones home uh, or 156 excuse me people are still kind of buzzing around you know it's mm -hmm. not it's right. not it's not it's not like you're in the suburbs of you correct. know of, of chicago where it's a correct. sleep a sleep away town correct hey let's take one more break here because i want to talk about hello fresh uh you've got new year's goals and hello fresh is here to help you achieve them skip the grocery store and take your control of your time 
and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your door. Fast and Fresh Recipes, HelloFresh's latest line of meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. Enjoy taste and quality done quick with recipes like falafel power bowls, seared steak and potatoes, and Bernays sauce, or Southwest pork and bean burritos. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be a stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options you're looking for to help you achieve your goals. Skip the snowy schlep to the grocery store. I love that word, schlep. Just and uh, stock up on snack sized desserts and more at HelloFresh Market. Simply add these staples and sweets to your weekly order and they'll arrive at your doorstep along with your meals. Uh, I will say HelloFresh sent me a bunch of stuff way back in the day and uh, couldn't be easier. Yeah, and you know what? The, the and key I'm point, a cooking yeah, noob. You, yeah, you don't like to cook, and yeah. this does make it easy. The thing that I, because I have New Year's goals, okay, where I'm going to stick to them this time. Me too, we all do. Okay. I have a problem with portion control. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I and, what? And they give you, they give you yeah. all you need. Yeah, so now it's like I know, like, well, you know, if I make a big pot of something, like I, made a, I made a chili over New Year's as a tradition. Mm-hmm. I just eat it all day. I yeah. you know, have almost a pot of chili by myself mm-hmm. because I just can't do portion control. HelloFresh takes care of that guesswork out of it. Like you know exactly how much you should eat and when. It's it's a no brainer. Literally, they make it a no brainer for you. Yeah. So go to HelloFresh. dot com slash Chicago twenty one and use code Chicago twenty one for twenty one free meals plus free shipping. That's code Chicago twenty one at HelloFresh. dot com slash Chicago twenty one. All right, let's get back into the episode. And so obviously, you know, the investigation starts. So like, you know, what what kind of happened? Um, they're able to connect right away that um, Kaylee and Maddie called Kaylee's ex-boyfriend seven times between 226 and 252. So obviously, clearly able to point them alive still at that time. Yeah. So uh, police immediately, like, they're like, hey, we really want to focus the window of 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, if you have any surveillance footage, if you have anything mm-hmm. out there from that time, like we need to pull it. Yeah. yeah, pull it. So they were really, really specific about that time. So um, after that, um, you know, just just the just the sense of it all. Like I said, the fact that someone could just walk into a place with a knife and then four people could be murdered and then two people could be unharmed was very strange. Yeah. Cause a lot of people are like, well, what? Why, why did they, why those four, why were those four, yeah. why not the two in the first floor? A lot of people were very confused. And then, um, a video comes out shortly after of, uh, the two, the two women, mm-hmm. Maddie and Kaylee at a, at a food truck Yep. shortly after, shortly after the murder. And, uh, you know, it's once you kind of see, um, someone knowing what happens hours later, it becomes very TV, eerie, yeah. you know, yep. and it became very eerie. And then that's kind of where I think a lot of the sleuthing and a lot of maybe, um, I don't want to say a lot of the public interest because obviously it's terrible and people would have been, you know, yeah. people would have cared obviously anyways, but yeah. And, and I do think there's an element of these are four young people, some cute blonde college yes. girls. Like there's yeah. a lot like, and it's just, and sure, the sure. details are, you know, like we broke down. It's like well, there's mm-hmm. two that were left alone theoretically, and then you know, who yeah. who, who could have done this? So who, yes. you know, and and a I, relatively safe town, like yeah. You know. And uh, so you're right. So then, and then you know, that's where I really think the sleuth started to come out of the re- the mm-hmm. woodwork because uh, you know, right at this point, there's like 130 law enforcement officers working on this case between yeah. the FBI, Idaho State Police, uh, Moscow Police. Uh, They're really like all hands on deck, right? All hands on deck here, and when you have you know a lot of these sleuths and a lot of people are coming at them rightfully so because, like that's where like it's one thing to talk about it because it's good to be in the news because that brings Mm -hmm. awareness that brings people like that's how the tip line came in and yep uh, you know we'll kind of get to why this is back in the news here in a second but um, you know that's that's kind of what helps a lot of these cases too you know cold cases come back to the surface all the time because they're you know, just in the media. Right. But when you have these people doing what they were doing, there were tarot card readers that were harassing professors. Yeah. A whole bunch of dumb shit. There was this kid at the food truck who everyone was like, just like, like, it's him. Yeah. yeah. They just like Can crucified you imagine? this kid. Yeah. yeah. Crucified this kid. They were crucifying the ex-boyfriend because they were calling him in the middle of the night. Yep. And uh, the police were very quick to clear both yeah. both of them yeah the guy the guy in the food truck video and the ex-boyfriend well and that's like the other thing i, I 
wanted to make a point of because it did feel like the internet and people out there were like, oh, the police aren't moving fast enough, law mm -hmm. enforcement. It's like you solved a quadruple murder in a month. Like to me, that is pretty fucking fast. You think, maybe, we'll see. Well, There's a lot to allegedly, allegedly, yeah, allegedly, they've, allegedly, they've made an arrest. Yes, yeah. we'll see. Yeah. So that's where, you know, it, it, it this, this case really took the nation by storm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, the salutes are out. Everyone's trying to figure out what's going on. And, um, you know, it, there was kind of there was there was kind of lulls and there was highs where people are like, oh, well, there's this, there's that, they, you know, and a lot of people are the law. I thought I watched so many of the press conferences between the, uh, you know, all the law officers. I thought they did a great job. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, I think a lot of people just don't understand that they can't say everything that they want to say. Well, yeah, you, you're exactly. going to botch the investigation. Yeah. You know. So even like, you know, so people were upset, even, even, you know, and it, it's tough to talk about, obviously, but, you know, some of the people's families were kind of going through mm -hmm. the, doing the media rounds and they were kind of becoming upset with law enforcement. It was coming, it was becoming a little tense for a while. So, yeah. uh, it was definitely, um, at a point where people are wondering like, oh my gosh, like this person's like going to get away with this. But a big tip came in around December 7th when, uh, police said, uh, they're looking for a white Hyundai Elantra yeah. between the year 2011, 2013. So that I tried to be like, cause even that, like you have a car, right? Yeah. You didn't have a license plate necessarily, but you have a car that popped up on surveillance footage, kind of placing that car at the scene of the crime. Correct. Mm -hmm. I, their statement said, we're looking for a Hyundai Elantra. We're specifically looking for, you know, a white Hyundai Elantra. We're going through our database of registered white Hyundai Elantras, which is 22,000 that were 22,000 registered. Yep. That is like a ton. A ton. It's like finding a, a needle in a stack of needles. You know, Correct, yeah. like how to how to pick out that right one was, and that's what I mean. That's where it's just like let the professional people, yeah, do their job. Yeah, because sure. that is like an unspeakable amount. Like, how do you narrow it down when you have that many of that specific make and model? For sure, crazy. For sure, and 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 the police were very honest at the beginning they're like we believe this person is critical information mm -hmm. and of course everyone speculated they're like well is this person the actual person yeah like, is this are yeah they, they're saying critical information but hey is this the actual person the murder, so yeah a lot of people are critical information kind of going through did that did you murder those guys yes yeah. exactly so that's kind of where we get to a point with um with like you know i'm sure the tip line was flooded mm -hmm. and you know if you're driving a white elantra you know Fuck. people were calling yeah. you all over the place yep so I'd say probably last week, maybe the week before that leading up to it, it went pretty quiet and it was just yeah. like, like I, and like I said, I would, I would read around, I would check certain forums and whatnot. And, um, I was like, man, this is, you know, and I was like, maybe it's cause the holidays, but they were pretty staunch and like, Hey, and they worked through Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and like, I, you know, they worked through whatever, but, um, lo and behold, Friday, December 30th, an arrest was made in Albertsville, Pennsylvania. 28-year-old uh, Washington State PhD student Brian Kohlberger was arrested and charged with four counts of murder and felony burglary. Well, and that's why you brought up Washington State earlier. Brian Kohlberger, like you said, was PhD, eight miles. I had no idea, I guess. The only thing I know about Washington State is like their football team. I had no yeah. idea where that was in the state. I would have assumed it was more like a coastal place, but Pullman being right next to Idaho – uh, it was just like, oh, okay, only yes. eight miles away from that campus. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. So, and it was a like, holy cow, like, well, you know, you yeah. know, things were going Boom. on. Like, yes, exactly. And I think a lot of people were like stunned to see because it was, and, and to me, it just kind of said like they were just being meticulous. And mm -hmm. I think they kind of maybe had their sights set on him for, uh, for a while. And also, I'm speculating now, but it just seems like, uh, you know, maybe. I don't know. Well, I did hear that they had identified him as a suspect and knew kind of they were following him while yeah. he was home. He was because he's his parents and he's from Pennsylvania that they were that they might have been waiting for him to throw away a can of soda or whatever yes. to get a DNA sample to try to match it to something at the crime scene. Yeah, and I and, I, and I'm very I'm being very careful with my words, obviously, mm -hmm. because I like like. Uh, the, the, the chief's name is Chief Fry. He's, to me, the only 100% mm -hmm. 
source on all this. Yeah. So everything else is, uh, unless it comes out of his mouth, it's speculation. Yeah. yeah. But there are, I did see other places and other news outlets that there was a genealogy connection. Maybe mm -hmm. he hasn't said that. But the thing is, at this point, everybody's waiting to when he goes back to Idaho. So he, uh, this, this, this suspect, uh, Brian Koberger, he has his extradition case uh, today, actually, at 3.30 Eastern, and nothing can be released until he goes back to Idaho. And Chief Fry was very open. He's like, hey, I know everyone wants to know what we found and how we got to Brian, but until he's back, yeah. legally, I cannot say anything. That's a weird thing because you always hear about extradition, like we talked about Carlos Ghosn. And it's like, well, he committed a crime in Japan and he has fled to another country. And it's like where they have no jurisdiction. You would think in that the, the, US the state US. borders wouldn't be as right. Dude. So I did. That, that was like a weird wrinkle to me that I guess Very. I wasn't fully aware of. Um, but they did say that there was a chance that he might just waive that. Uh, right to the extradition hearing that that's that's what his his lawyer has been making statements it sounds yeah. like he is going to yeah. make it pretty easy he wants to go to idaho mm -hmm. and fight the case and prove his innocence yeah from what his uh public defender is saying um and uh yeah the thing is so what, what's a couple interesting notes here is so they released that hyundai elantra thing and and chief fry did say he said there was an elantra found he didn't specifically say. Yep. Through other forums, it's been it's been pretty confirmed that he drove an Elantra. Yeah, I saw that interview yes. too, where it's like this, the reporter asked him directly. Yes. Being like, and he said, "We believe so." Yeah. Like that's you know like he is being very very yes. careful, and judicious with his words. Yeah. Yes, he's being he he is, and then but there's other ways, and I, I've seen like there's there I feel confident in saying that he, he yeah. an Elantra belongs to him. Um, what's interesting though, is that they released that around December 7th, like I said, and Washington States, they went on break on December 16th. And then on the 16th is when he drove back to Pennsylvania with his father. His father flew to Washington. Yeah. A pre-planned, you know, we'll drive cross country. Yes. With the holiday, almost like that commercial. Yeah. From, you know, where guys like, yeah, I quit my job. His dad hops in the car with him and they just go. Yeah. And it, you know, and, and the report from his dad was that he thought his son had been acting normally. Yes. So, yes. And I mean, you, you sit there and you think that's like a, you know, that's like a 10 day stretch right there. That's it's a he, long trip. So we're 2000 miles. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But even from the 7th oh, to the yeah, 16th, yeah. like yeah. he must've been, you know, unless he wasn't. Yeah. Unless he wasn't, unless he wasn't yeah. because, uh, 28 years old, mm -hmm. PhD student in criminology, I've seen some some psychological surveys before, and this isn't about him specifically, but about the population in general, that if you are going to commit acts of violence, you typically do it before the age of 28, mm -hmm. okay? And there's a reason why if you look at sentencing for repeat offenders that are, that are violent, violent offenders, but like assault and battery, things like that, that they'll get released. Typically, their sentences line up with, between the ages of 20, 28 and 30. And they do that because you have just less testosterone in your system but when you start turning 28, that your impulses to be violent are less than when they were 18, 24, whatever. So it's like, ah, like this guy committed this horrible assault at age 18, give him 10 years, and then likely he won't be a repeat offender. So now, that the, the, there there is speculation. It'll be interesting to see what comes with this DNA, because if he did this at 28, it, it's very unlikely that this would be his first act of violence. So it'd be interesting to see, like, is, is this guy going to get linked to other things? Because yeah, statistically, if you do it at 28 and you've never been caught, it's probable it's probable that you've had acts of violence in your past. But he has no DNA, no no arrests on the record. Correct. Not that I've seen, no. Right. So that, so then that was part of the reason why getting a DNA match initially was difficult because you can, first of all, you have to go through the scene, separate all the different blood samples and all that. And then once you have it, you have to run it through your database of DNA on file. And it's like, well, it doesn't match anything. Yeah. So And, and that's what, you know, I don't know what DNA they found on the scene. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see mm -hmm. once, you know, once, he, he was very open about, hey, once he gets back to Idaho, we will reveal what. Yeah. We how we built the case exactly yeah. and what's going on but um 
it's 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 crazy, man. It's 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 something that I I just wonder a guy he was so close like he he was big and you know he was mm-hmm. a criminology student yeah and um you know and here's where like like what I just said what well, what we just talked about in that first whatever twenty three minutes were pretty stone cold fact and here's yeah. where you know we could talk about where it's like hey now here's where it gets a little speculatory and it and I think this is different from being sleuthy right. where people like that were ruining people's lives when they're saying like this is the person no that's fucked up this yeah. is like hey this is what totally. is kind of out there right you, you know the the it's it's being reported so he was in the criminology with uh, at the sales college it's a small catholic school in mm-hmm. Pennsylvania and they're the professor for BTK. She wrote a book on him. You know the BTK killer in Kansas. Yep. Mm-hmm. She wrote a book on him, and he may have taken a class with her. So, like this guy, may have had an infatu- mm-hmm. infatuation with serial killers. Yeah, and then, and then there was another. There was an incident also that I saw reported at a bar where he was being like just very forward and like making female bartenders uncomfortable to the point that he was removed. Mm-hmm. And then while that's not a crime. He was in that bar's database as like, hey, like we don't fuck with that, yeah. don't let that guy in here, yeah. because he's been, you know, uh, at least unpleasant. And then that was like the other thing where it's like, what was the motivation? Because yeah, you know, it's hard to it's if he doesn't know these girls, which it sounds in the in the guy Ethan, if he doesn't know them, which it seems like he probably wouldn't or wouldn't have like a deep connection to them, then it is like. What the, what the fuck? Yeah, and, and I think that's 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 the biggest question. I saw that uh, Kaylee's father did say that they didn't see a link. They they never he was never on the radar. But now that he's been arrested, he said he has seen that there may have been a link between them. Oh really? So okay. AB, ABC reported that I believe. Okay. And that um, and they and then he said after that that he's not ready to talk about the link yet okay so who knows if it was that yeah um so that's that's obviously if i had three big questions for this case right now it's like who obviously i want to know who but like why you know who the was mo- the target yeah, like what the was motive. what was the motive here yep. i think that's everyone's number one question yeah clearly yeah you should say that from a from a prosecution standpoint you don't need to prove motive Mm-hmm. So if you have like a DNA match and enough evidence, like you, he doesn't have to have a motive because yeah, it might change the degree of the murder charge if it was premeditated or not. Sure, but you don't necessarily need to be able to prove motive to yeah. to get a to get a murder sure. get a murder. Um, and that's kind of what my next thing is. Is I I really want to know my next question is I really want to know like if this guy's going to talk like if was this really like an obsessive like thing where he was like mm-hmm. into this or is this he's going to be quiet and maintain his innocence so far he's done that well yeah and have but, you seen the family statement through the public defender um yes i have Kohlberg, so i, get, I want me to read it here yeah it goes we have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence rather than the than judge unknown facts and make erroneous assumptions Koberger's family said in a statement released by his public defender jason a labar i want so now that he is going to get um He'll have to have a new public defender, I assume, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Correct. Okay. And I, I think, and I think we're we're both in the same page. Like you, you have a right to a fair trial. Innocent totally. Pro, innocent until proven yep. guilty. Um, and then, and then I think the biggest one is like what you know the bottom two roommates like that. You know the haunting that they must go through every day. That's that's must be unimaginable that's because gotta, the fact that they got to have a therapist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just don't understand like how. Like what happened? Well, I mean, they talk about that, like survivor's remorse. Yeah, it's like a yeah, real, yeah, it's a real thing. Yeah, so I just don't know. Survivor's what, guilt. Yeah, what happened where they, maybe he didn't know they were home. I, I just don't know because it was a basement. Maybe he thought it was just like a laundry room down there or something. Right. Um, but that's like one of the strangest things about the case is like you you went so far as to do four, but like what like what, what would happen? You know, what was it the house he was after? A lot of people are saying. Yeah. Was he just looking for a house? Or was it I wonder a certain if he, Maybe person? he got spooked by something, you know? Maybe. Like, you know, yeah. you just, you never know. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people were really coming after the cops and everything, and they were saying, you know, this is going cold, this and that. But it seems to me that they had their sights set and they had a they had a target and they kind of knew what they were doing this whole time so yeah credit to them and credit to them you know i feel like 
like anything, there's always like a, an element of ego. Like we're going to do this. Like we don't need outside help, but they called in state police, FBI, FBI, Mm -hmm. like all, you know, like you said off the top, like it really wasn't all hands on deck, uh, situation. And hopefully they got their guy and there's going to be some, some level of justice because this is, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, if there wasn't a motive, or a strong motive that almost makes it scarier in a way. Yeah, like the the randomness of it, and it's like it could happen to anyone at any time. Always heightens like holy shit. Like yeah. that's it wasn't like you know some long standing beef or like uh you know if it was like over drugs or something. You know like how how a lot of the murders have like some kind of you know point blank like you you it makes sense. Just having a guy being like I want to murder some people yeah. is. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, but obviously that exists. Like, you know. Totally. There's with, you know, the the, fuck, the sick amount of mass shootings that happen in this country yep. every year. It's just, you see it, you know. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, and a lot of those people, like, they're out to be, they're out to make a name for themselves, you know. Feels like, that's, like that. Yeah. yeah. It, it, well, it, the, it, the Columbine killers certainly were. I don't yeah. know if you ever read any of their stuff. I, I have. I yeah. have. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of these people were, and that's why I wonder, like, was it, was it something to do with that considering he studied so much into it? Yeah. You know, like, is that what we're going to find out where he was like motivated by that? I don't know. I also speculate and wonder if it is like, if it is sort of like the Columbine thing or like that frame of mind where they genuinely thought that they were better than like better than everybody. Mm -hmm. And it was like their job to you know, kind of see to the destruction of people because there was their right and their authority. And I wonder if this guy had an element of, of that to him as well. Like, mm-hmm. oh, it's a brilliant PhD, you know. Yeah. Also, I find it weird that a guy from the Northeast would be like, I'm going to go to Washington fucking state for my PhD all the way across the country in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like, why? Why? What's the motivation for that? That seemed know. odd to me too. Unless maybe he, you know, <laughs> there was the, who was the fucking guy, the famous guy, I always blank out on his name from the Northeast, from the Pacific. Bundy. Yeah, Ted yeah. Bundy. Unless it was like a Ted, like I'm going to mm-hmm. go where Ted Bundy went. Like, who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, and, that, and that's stuff that a lot of people are speculating about. Yeah. A lot of people are speculating about. And um, maybe it was the only program he got into. Who knows? You know, there's a lot to, there's a lot to fill. There's so many more. Yeah. Because obviously, and that's what, and the thing is too, is is they did say at the uh, press conference after they made the arrest, the chief did say, hey, we are looking to learn more about this guy. Yeah. If you have anything, if you knew him, please let us know what you know about him. Yeah. And that's where all this stuff is coming around. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it should be noted as well. Idaho is one of four states that uh, you could not plead insanity, hmm. um, which is interesting because it, that's yeah. a, that's a typical, um, yeah, plea when it comes to this kind of stuff. That's it. it yeah, um, that is interesting. It still does have the death penalty. Okay. Um, but that, yeah. I mean, Idaho is like the frontier. You know, yeah. like that is. If you watch that show Yellowstone, I feel like the Idaho and Montana, like the, that that part of the country. Is... Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, did you did you have anything? I know you. Yeah, I know there was maybe some you wrote down. That no, I think we I think we covered um, most of them. Very, uh, it, it's there's just some things about like I, I now I'm getting a little sleuthy. Like I I think there's probably more to this guy. Yeah, and like, like I you know like I wouldn't be surprised if like this is the thing that links him to other things because and that's what people want to know too yeah you know? yeah so if there are cold cases from the from the northeast where you know he maybe he's been doing it for a while and he finally you know like oh, i gotta get the fuck out of here i'm gonna go to washington state for criminal you know like that yeah. kind of that is i i who knows but i think that there's some interesting reasons to point you to think that i guess yeah. so hopefully not you know but i wouldn't be shocked we'll say that yeah and this is you know that that's kind of what this episode we wanted to do was kind of get everything under one roof here i know we talked about it uh probably about a month ago on one of the pick sixes and yeah. um 
Can you imagine me and this guy's parents? Yeah, and, and I, I feel bad for them. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. And, and the whole family because, you know, their uh, their life just changed and, you know, they, they yep. were in that house when it got raided and I'm sure they were like, what the fuck, you know? Unless right. Unless if, you know, who knows, we're going to find out, like... It's some, I don't know. This is this is a whole nother can of worms, right? Mm-hmm. When it comes to parenting, parenting, and like what, knowing what your kids are up to and whatever. But I, this is a little different when it's a twenty-eight-year-old man yeah. across the country. Right. If we're talking about a fifteen-year-old who does something at a school, like that's mm-hmm. a little different. I feel when it comes it, to parenting, like you should know what's. I don't yes, know. Yes and no. Yeah. It's like they laid the foundation. You know, you hate to blame everything on the parents, but and maybe he yeah. is just genuinely mentally unwell which yeah. uh, you know, obviously on some level he is yeah uh if if he didn't be commit this crime but it is like i don't know like that i just can't imagine like you you know you're the dad and you're like i know a nice thing i'm gonna do for the holidays i'm gonna fly out to washington and dr- have a cross-country trip with my son for yeah. the holiday it's gonna be great and it was like this real bonding experience and you get home you get you know you find out that your son who is acting normal had, had mur- you know murdered four people and it's like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. You know, because like, that is like a very normal father son thing to do. I feel like, hey let's, hey, let's have a cross country drive, and they, you know, they're getting along, they're bonding, a lot of one on one time in the car. What do you talk about? And then it's like, well, you left the biggest thing out was that you, you know, yeah, yeah. So exactly, and yeah. and there is um, there is a whole bunch of other types of rumors and stuff going around about him and whatnot but we'll you know leave those we'll, we'll, we'll kind of leave it at that for now we'll okay. leave it at that until more comes out we'll try to get you know some 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 I'm sure we'll revisit yeah it. better sources and we'll maybe we'll come back on this in a pick six especially once he's extradited to idaho and uh the idaho police and uh the moscow police are able to say more but mm-hmm. um most importantly um you just hope it's a step in the right direction towards uh healing for the families and the uh, surviving roommates and um i wonder if that i always wonder about because people always say that yeah i don't i I can't imagine that it helps at all there's any yeah like i I don't know yeah i mean i hope i hope it does for them Mm -hmm. but i can't imagine that it it like yeah we got the guy it doesn't bring back here yeah you know but i think there is an element well i don't know i'm not in the position but if yeah. i were i think there is an element where you always want to know yeah you know yeah you like a little to know. but it's like because if you always like I, like there's cold cases that i've like followed and i'm just like i see the parents and they're just like still distraught yeah. distraught and it's just like they just don't know there's nobody there's no yeah. like and they're just like what happened like where is she yeah you know which i guess is like, yeah i guess it's different when there's no remains maybe I don't maybe know. but it's still like maybe you just want to hear the answer to why yeah you know but I don't know. I don't know. Even if you hear it, it's like, man, yeah, fuck you. Like, yeah, fuck you. That yeah, doesn't make it right. Right. Obviously. It's fucking. And doesn't like bring your daughter back. Yep. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be uh, now that it's. I, I'm much more intrigued now that we. That there's a. a, a you know, an arrest. An arrest has been made. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Oh. Yeah. That's all there really is to it. Um, all right, Chief. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. That's it for today. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. We will see you then.